he is none other than a uh, but very renowned name uh, in the field of medicine and diabetes uh, dr sk chauhan sir dr sk chauhan sir is presently designated as a senior consultant physician diabetes and heart specialist at chauhan polyclinic monika sir is having uh, uh, sir is affiliated as a medical officer previously aff affiliated as a medical officer in cardiology department safdarjung hospital new delhi and he was uh, working as a consultant physician at El Moisir Hospital Al Jom Sakaka Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and he is also a consultant cardiology in charge coronary unit at Sri Ram Heart Institute and Research Center Kirtinagar sir is honored as a MBBS MD internal medicine and he is also having certificate courses from PH FP in diabetes and also having a certificate uh, courses from professor M Vishwanath and diabetes research center Welcome you sir and thank you so much for giving uh, BI BI okay. uh, opportunity to conduct this event. So um Yamin yes, Yamin sir. can can you see my slides? Uh, not yet sir. I stop sharing my slide uh, then you will be able to yes, uh, upload your slide. So before uh, before yeah. moving ahead, I would like to introduce and invite our second speaker for the evening, Dr. Viveka Kumar sir. Dr. Viveka Kumar sir is a big name, eminent name in the field of cardiology. Sir is MBBS, MD medicine, and DM cardiology, FHRD, FS, AI, PS, FES, FCC, FS, AI. Sir is working as a interventional cardiologist and principal director and chief of cath lab cardiac science. Pan Max Super Specialty Hospital. Sir has extensive experience in the field of cardiac intervention and electrophysiology. He has done more than 7,500 angioplasties and 2,500 balloon valvotomies with good outcome. Sir is also active member of TAVI and Structural Heart Fellowship in USA and Europe, Denmark. Sir is also having a membership from uh, MHR as member of Heart Rhythm Society. Sir has been awarded with various award and rewards. So few of them are Chikitsa Ratan Award DMA, Vidya Ratan Award Kanpur University in 2010. He is also being awarded International Award of Excellence in Cardiology Medicine. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Dr. Vivekananda Kumar sir, and thank you so much for being a part of this meeting. Dr. Chauhan will sir, be absolutely. upset. Absolutely, sir. Good to go. Perfect. Well, so good evening to you all, and uh, sorry for the technical glitch. Uh, so I think if you see uh, the current cardiovascular spectrum and the uh, diabetes association, we know that we need to choose our molecules really well to optimize the outcomes in our patients. And uh, the simplicity is with lenalidipine, as you know, many times uh, in this forum itself. And Dr. Chauhan and we have also said that it is like an old ad which used to come that you know you fill it, shut it, and forget it. Similarly, lenalidipine is one where whatever the diabetic nephropathy GFR is, it is the safest and simplest thing to use. Even in renal failure patient who has got heart failure, patient who has got uncontrolled diabetes, all those things it can be given. So let's go with the real. Garden variety case, and we'll go with a case example. If you see, it's a type two diabetic patient had symptoms of heart failure, 44 years old female, had history of mild progressive dyspnea on exertion, fatigue for four weeks, and chronic illness of type two diabetes for two years, hypertensive dyslipidemia for seven years, had history of cardiovascular disease also. And if you look at the medication, she was on metformin 1000 milligram twice a day, etorvastatin 20 milligram once a day, telmisartan 40 milligram once a day. Weight was on the you know 72 kg, so BMI 23.5, not much. Blood pressure normal. Clinical examination also showed slightly elevated JVP. And if you look at the three months average sugar HbA1c, that was 7.8%. So it means that it was not really good control. And EGFR of 41, so mild, you know, CKD as well. So here is a patient with symptoms of heart failure. So how would we approach? So the perception is that lenalidipine has proven cardiovascular safety and no benefit. Hence, it is not prescribed in type 2 diabetic patient at risk of heart failure. But if you look at the 
uh, you know, data. So diabetes doubles the risk of cardiovascular risk. If you see, you know, coronary artery disease odds ratio, if you see it as a result ratio, that is, uh, you know, definitely, you know, if you see coronary death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, all these events are, you know, hazard ratio is almost 2.3 for coronary death, 1.82 for non-fatal myocardial infarction. And similarly, it's a very strongly associated with other vascular event like ischemic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and unclassified stroke. So if you look at the hazard ratio, which is in the range of from varying from 2.27 to 1.73. So it means that all other vascular deaths, again, it is so vasculopathy is a, something which is very, very important in diabetic patient. And look at the data. It's a huge data, almost 698,000 patients from 102 prospective studies. So it means that this is a real data from our patients. And if you see the diabetes, uh, you know, doubles the cardiovascular risk. So Swedish National Registry also, if you see, you know, 12,000 patients, death from cardiovascular disease, almost double match control patient with type 2 diabetes. If you look at the death from coronary artery disease, again, there is a significant jump. And if you see hospitalization for cardiovascular disease, again, there is a, you know, a significant increase. And this is year on year data is right from 1998 till, you know, 2013. So that all this shows, and this Swedish data is again from, you know, 400. 57,000 patients, so nearly 5 lakh patient data. And this again clearly shows the red bar is without diabetes, where the event rates are significantly lower, which is compared to diabetes, which is the blue bar is significantly, you know, almost two times more than the red bar. So type 2 diabetes, CKD, and cardiovascular death, these are the connecting link. So the, the what we call, you know, cardio renal continuum and the diabetes. So they are fairly closely interrelated. So, you know, if you see the hypertension and type 2 diabetes, coexistence of diabetes leads to elevated risk of CVD. There is a micro and macro albuminemia. So these are the, you know, surrogate and high risk predictor for cardiovascular disease. And obviously they are end product of chronic diabetes with CKD. Hypertension is a very powerful and independent risk predictor for CKD. Then up to 75% of CVD in diabetic may be attributable to hypertension. So hypertension and diabetes in turn would lead to increased mortality. So that's again something which is very, very important and we need to understand that. If you look at the albuminuria, it is one of the interrelated disorder along with the contributes patients with type 2 diabetes. So if you see in type 2 diabetic patient, 39% patients have microalbuminuria. So these are the strong association and the risk factors which increase the adverse events are hypertension, diabetes, obesity, and dyslipidemia. So these are the things which in turn would lead to endothelial dysfunction, atherosclerosis. Then, in, you know, microalbuminuria, macroalbuminuria, MI and stroke will result in chronic kidney disease left ventricular remodeling, heart failure, end-stage kidney disease. And eventually, as we said, most of the diabetic patients, more than 63% of them, would have death from cardiovascular causes. So that is why the final common pathway is this. The mortality is more frequent in type 2 diabetes patients with albuminuria. So that's a very, very strong comorbid condition which and predictor of adverse events. So if you see the albuminuria with impaired EGFR, and if you look at the standardized 10 year cumulative incidence of mortality, the biggest bar is patient who has got albuminuria with impaired GFR. Impaired GFR standalone does not carry that big a risk. And when you compare it with no diabetes, no kidney disease, baseline 7.7%, it reaches almost 47%. So there's an excess mortality. And you can remember that mortality is a very, very hard end point. So, so much of jump in mortality if the patient has CKD associated with uh, you know, uh, protein, albuminuria, microalbuminuria, then they, the albuminuria stand alone. So it means that they are working at a very, very exponential uh, risk factor if both are together. So albuminuria and impaired GFR, if they are together, it means that we are asking for more trouble. The effect of DPP-4 inhibitors on cardiovascular safety in patients with kidney disease has been understudied. And if you see the data proportion of trial patient with egfr less than 60 mils per minute per 1.73 meter square at baseline server tb53 data the proportion of patients these kind of patients where the egfr 
was you know more than 30 and less than 30. So you can see these data, a pass exam in all these was not really uh, you know well represented. So if you see you know, minuscule with patients who had EGFR less than 30, so you can see you know hardly 2.1 percent in server examining data 2.9 percent there was hardly any patient in that direction but if you see the data from Kamalina and carolina the lunar gifting is supported by unique cvt programs and that patients with type 2 diabetes and established cardiovascular disease and kidney disease almost 7000 patients with lena gifting versus placebo 2.2 two years of median follow-up was there, and lenagliptin did not increase the risk of adverse cardiovascular event mace endpoints, and it also did not increase the risk of adverse kidney event as placebo, whereas relatively, you know, in Carolina also, so it also showed that the lenagliptin did not increase the risk of adverse cardiovascular death, and only DPP-4 inhibitor is the lenagliptin with two CVT outcome trial data. That's a very, very impressive. If you see both of them had more than 6,000 patients. And also the, uh, you know, the Carolina was 6.3 years median follow-up. So that's a pretty long follow-up was also there. And if you see, Lena Gliprin did not increase the risk of cardiovascular events 3P maze across the age. So primary endpoint, you can see that when you compare with the placebo, uh, you know, patient with events that matches. So obviously there is no, you know, increase in cardiovascular disease. And when you look at the safety in older patients also, when you compare with the placebo in older patients, more than 75 years, the graph separates in favor of the Elena Glyphrin. So it means that, you know, in early it is even worthwhile to use it. So Lena Glyphrin did not increase the risk of hospitalization for the heart failure in the overall population or across age groups. So you can see that, you know, in elderly patients also, come as compared to the other uh, DPP-4 inhibitor, the, the linagliptine is something which is really favoring odds ratio. It's usually in favor of this uh, compared to the other uh, DPP-4 inhibitors. So subgroup analysis from Kamalina, linagliptine showed normal reduction in, you know, hospitalization of the heart failure in certain group of patients patients to see the North American subgroup 35% relative risk reduction was there in Asian patients, almost 53. So Asian patients do far better and patients not using is at baseline. So if you see no increased risk of hospitalization, the heart failure was consistent across the high risk groups. So Carmelina did show that Lena Gifting did not increase the hospitalization of heart failure risk regardless of baseline characteristics such as history of previous heart failure, renal impairment, or atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. In all these, insulin uses was uh, world reason or age more than 65. In all these age groups, again, the Lena Gifting was fairly uh, good, well tolerated and did not increase the adverse event and hospitalization with the heart failure was not there as with the other Gliptin did show. So ESC, ESD guideline 2019 showed that the DPP-4 inhibitor in patients of type 2 diabetes mellitus, the, when you look at the uh, recommendations, that shows that DPP-4 inhibitor citagliptin and lenagliptin has a neutral effect on risk of hospitalization with the heart failure and may be considered for diabetic treatment in patients with heart failure. Then again, the you know, statement was that saxagliptin significantly increased the risk of heart failure hospitalization and it not recommended in patients with diabetes with heart failure. Elogliptin was associated with non-significant trend towards heart failure hospitalization. Citagliptin and lenagliptin had neutral effect and vilagliptin had no significant effect on LV ejection fraction but led to an increased uh, LV volume. So it means that safest of the lot in DPP-4 inhibitor in decreasing the heart failure hospitalization or at least neutral is the linagliptin and to some extent citagliptin as well. So despite high proportion of type 2 diabetes with kidney disease, Carmelina confirmed the long-term renal safety profile of linagliptin. So again, you can see when compared to the placebo patients with event, there was a significantly uh, lesser uh, adverse event Uh, a 
again, if you see the uh, learning from Tamilina trial was risk reduction for albuminuria with linagliptin. There was 14% lower risk of progression of albuminuria and 15% greater likelihood of significant progression. So again, if you see the, you know, renal protection as we have harped on and we had shown enough data that albuminuria is a very, very strong predictor of, uh, you know, mortality due to the diabetes. And here is a molecule which decrease the albuminuria progression also, and in total, 14% relative risk reduction and 15% uh, relative risk reduction is there. So it means that eventually the cardiovascular event rates will come down significantly. So you, if you look at the effect of lenagliptin versus placebo on cardiovascular and kidney outcome in nephrotic range proteinuria with type 2 diabetes, the carmelina randomized control trial did answer that. So there was improvement in albuminuria and glycemic control, and there was no effect on cardiovascular or kidney disease. So it means that you know this is a fairly well tolerated renal profile, and also as far as the cardiac safety is concerned, that is well proven. Linagliptin improved the glycemic control in patients, and you know the NRP status without increasing the hypoglycemic risk. So that is why we say that it is easy and safe to use. So if you see the glycemic control. That's the fairly decent, but there is no significant hypoglycemic event. So as a cardiac uh, patients, we would always not like to have any significant hypoglycemic episode, and that is why this is a molecule to look for. So linagliptin improves the USCR response, 20% reduction in that in patients who have early signs of CKD. And, you know, Maralina type 2 diabetes data did show that. So you can see that, you know, there was a, you know, reduction in the uh, uh, this response. So linagliptin in Asians, because this is more important, that how does it fare in, in our population? And this sub-analysis from Carmelina did show that there is no increased risk of cardiovascular event with linagliptin in Asian participants that is consistent with the uh, overall population also. So you can see that in, you know, when you compare the odds ratio. So the benefit of cardiovascular death, stroke, fatal, non-fatal, MI, everything, and four-point maze, you can see it's falling right in the middle in odds ratios, which means that linagliptin in Asian population is also uh, you know, benefiting similarly. And there is a nominal increase in hospitalization of heart failure with linagliptin in Asian subgroup, but that's not, you know, very significant. Uh, and there is, you know, increase in all-cause hospitalization with linagliptin in Asian patients. Also, there is some data, but not a huge this thing. So the linagliptin has a favorable outcome in Asian population. So hospitalization due to the heart failure is 53% relative risk reduction. All-cause hospitalization is 26% relative risk reduction. And heart hospitalization to the heart failure and all-cause mortality, two endpoints you combine, then there is a 45% relative risk reduction is there. So it means that, you know, not only in, you know, in Asian population, the overall trend towards benefit is also quite significant in Asian population compared to the uh, rest of the world. So if you sum up with this molecule about, you know, how should we go about uh, this molecule in diabetics, so type 2 diabetic care with linagliptin has shown proven cardiovascular safety across board and spectrum of cardiovascular and renal risk also has proven heart failure safety across the patient profile. And there is a robust evidence and guideline recommendation also for effective and safe use in heart failure. So I think uh, this is uh, like, there's no confusion in how many uh, strength it comes, five milligram once a day dose, this is there. And it's independent of hepatic function, renal function, ethnicity, age, background, BMI, and disease duration. So this is something where, you know, it's a very good uh, for physicians also and the patient also. There's no confusion and one goes, so one size fits all. And that is why these are such a beautiful and wonderful drug. So thank you very much for your kind attention. And I hope uh, Dr. Chauhan would be ready by this time. So over to Yami and Dr. Chauhan. Hmm. Thank you so much, sir, for, for wonderful presentation. Uh, we will take all the questions at the end of both the presentations. So now, I would like to request Dr. Chauhan, sir, uh, if you can start. Your... Dr. Viveka's wonderful talk, we will be um, uh, talking about optimizing treatment regimen in type 2 diabetes patients. 
simplicity with uh, lena griffin can you can you can you uh, go to the next slide uh, uh, yamin yeah uh, so we have patient 1 uh, a newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes patient presenting with metformin intolerance uh, uh, he is uh, presenting with history of weight loss polyuria increased thirst uh, fatigue uh, since last uh, past 2 to 3 weeks evaluation done and the patient was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes he was diagnosed with hypertension one year ago and he's got no history of diabetes or cvd and he's a it, intolerant to metformin and the current medication include telmisartan 20 mg once daily since he has been recently diagnosed with diabetes nothing uh, for diabetes has been started on examination his blood pressure is well controlled on telmisartan 20 mg and he has got a weight of 45 kg only glycemic profile hba1c is 7.2% fasting is 120 pp is 210 and egfr is fine and there are no ecg changes next slide uh, yash uh, yamin uh, so uh, here is a newly diagnosed uh, patient profile with metformin intolerance and how should we approach the patient and the usual perception is that lenalidocaine cannot be initiated as a first line therapy okay because we are so used to uh, being fed upon metformin as being the first line therapy next slide uh, yamin right uh, so uh, let's uh, understand this uh, that uh, uh, the comparable efficacy of all DPP4 inhibitors. There has been a, a analysis, meta analysis of 83 randomized controlled trials com uh, comparing the efficacy of DPP4 inhibitors in patients with type 2 diabetes. Although it's not a head to head comparison, but linagliptin stands out uh, uh, as compared to the uh, all the existing uh, uh, DPP4 inhibitors, cetagliptin, bildagliptin, saxagliptin and compared absolutely fine with even with cetagliptin comparing uh, 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 with the uh, HbA1c reduction efficacy of 0.74%. Next slide, uh, Yamin. Fine. Uh, so uh, if we uh, see linagliptin as a monotherapy uh, and also in combination with metformin, then at a high baseline HbA1c of 9.7, and 11.8 so have the baseline more is the hba1c reduction uh, even to the tune of 3.46 uh, at a baseline hba1c of 11.8 percent but while in combination with metformin uh, uh, comparable efficacy of uh, uh, linagliptin with metformin uh, at 11.8 uh, uh, compared to monotherapy of 3.46 and 3.70 and at a baseline HbA1c of 12.1%, the efficacy is uh, to the tune of 5.14, which is extremely, uh, uh, you know, effective and impressive. Next slide, uh, Yamin. Fine. Linagliptin significantly reduces HbA1c in type 2 diabetes patients regardless of duration of diabetes. Now, that has been uh, an important consideration because... Uh, uh, given the loss of beta cells as we progress in the duration of diabetes and uh, <clears throat> in a duration uh, uh, in early in diagnosis from one to five years uh, as compared to the uh, uh, placebo the uh, reduction of HPA1C is 0.77 uh, that is the corrected uh, 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 HPA1C reduction similarly uh, with the uh, with the a uh, duration of 5 to 10 years, the corrected uh, 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 HbA1c reduction is to the tune of 0.6%, while uh, the uh, uh, in a, in a uh, duration which is more than 10 years, the uh, HbA1c reduction is still uh, efficacious and good enough as compared to the placebo. Next one, uh, Yami. Uh, meaningful HbA1c reductions were observed in all age categories, so it's not only about the duration of diabetes but also about the age groups, okay? So less than 65 years, 65 to 74 years and more than 75 years, there has uh, always been a perception that probably in elderly people, uh, the uh, linagliptin or DPP-4 inhibitors will not be that efficacious, but uh, uh, this cartoon uh, is good enough to uh, make us understand that even in people more than 75 years, if you see the linagliptin uh, 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 placebo corrected HPA1C reduction is nearly to the tune of 1%, right? So next slide, uh, Yamin. 
initial combination of renagliptin plus metformin, uh, there is a two to three fold increased ODE of HbA1c goal achievement that is compared to metformin alone. So if you were to use a DPP4 inhibitor uh, like the uh, linagliptin uh, compared to metformin, if you were to use them in combination, linagliptin and metformin, mm -hmm. there is at least twice the chance that you will be able to achieve your goals with the combination as compared to metformin alone, whether in the dose of 500 milligram or in the dose of 1000 milligram. Next slide, uh, Yami. Right. So in patients not on insulin at baseline, that is very important. Initiation of insulin was required more often with placebo than with linagliptin. So that uh, uh, compares, you know, that that's comparing people who uh, at the baseline were not and uh, not on insulin and were starting on any oral hypoglycemic agent. So what would be the fate of these patients compared with patients who were started on linagliptin? So you would require insulin less often as compared to those who were not on linagliptin at the baseline. So that tells about the efficacy and the durability of action of linagliptin in type 2 diabetes. Next one, uh, Yamin. So linagliptin as an add-on to insulin improved glycemic control. And uh, the, the change in the primary and the secondary efficacy and points from baseline uh, in a period of two, uh, 24 weeks, whether it was fasting blood glucose, 2-hour PPG, or change in the HbA1c, all were being impacted favorably as uh, uh, compared to the placebo when it was linagliptin, even added on to insulin. So uh, you uh, you were having uh, better changes uh, on front of fasting blood glucose to our PPG and even HbA1c when you were adding linagliptin to insulin as compared to a placebo. Next one, uh, Yamin. Uh, so uh, we come to the second patient, elderly patient with hypoglycemia. Uh, uh, I mean, it is not an uncommon clinical occurrence. 70-year-old patient presented with palpitations, sweating, tremors, blood sugar 56, type 2 diabetes for more than 10 years, dyslipidemia uh, present, not a hypertensive, recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia recorded. And one of these episodes led to a fall during, uh, 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 during this and he needed hospitalization for two weeks. History of hypertension since last past seven years. Uh, patient medication for type 2 diabetes being taken are metformin 1000 BD, glimipride in a good enough dose of 2 mg twice daily at Orva setting 20 mg, BMI 25, blood pressure okay, glycemic profile HbA1c 6.8. Despite that, this patient is getting into a, a, a recurrent hypoglycemia. You can understand why because of a pretty good dose of glimipride. Passing blood glucose 107, PPG 184. Kidney function serum creatine good enough one, EGFR well maintained and no uh, ECG abnormalities. Next one, uh, Yamin. So here is a patient with uh, elderly patient with recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia and how should we approach this patient? And our usual perception is that use, uh, choosing an anti-hypoglycemic agent for elderly is not a challenge. Next one, uh, Yamin. Uh, so, linagliptin uh, uh, provides proven efficacy regardless of patient age. That is very important. So, in elderly patients even, uh, when we use linagliptin, it has got good efficacy uh, without predisposing the patient to uh, uh, recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia here. Our prototype patient, although has an HbA1c of only 6.8%, but is confronted with the challenge of recurrent hypoglycemia. So, uh, if you see the adjusted mean HbA1c changes, from baseline at week 24 by age, you would see that less than 50 years, the reduction, HbA1c reduction is to the tune of 0 0.6. 51 to 65 years, it is to the tune of 0 0.68. 65 to 75 years, though little less, uh, 0 0.6, although statistically significant as compared to the placebo. And more than 75 years, a very good HbA1c reduction to the tune of 0.8% without predisposing our patient to recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia. Next one, uh, Yamin. So fewer patients on linagliptin required additional glucose lowering medications across age groups after 12 weeks of treatment. As soon or as early as 12 weeks of treatment, if uh, you uh, started your patient on linagliptin and then you see what additional glucose lowering agents were required, you will see that those who were started on linagliptin, they required uh, uh, few or uh, lesser glucose lowering agents as compared to the 
placebo. Next one, uh, Yamin. So, lenalidocaine provides proven efficacy in patients with a long history of type 2 diabetes. That is very important because beta cell exhaustion has been an issue uh, in uh, the natural history of type 2 diabetes. And we know that uh, all DPP4 inhibitors, uh, like uh, the uh, other uh, anti hyperglycemic agents, depend both on beta cells as well as alpha cells. And here we have lenalidocaine. Uh, which is uh, giving us good efficacy even uh, in type 2 diabetics more than type uh, more than 10 years of duration and you would see that uh, there are two things here number one is the absolute hp1c reduction in in these people and second is the percentage of people who are meeting their hp1c targets so not only that we have uh, an absolute hp1c reduction even to the tune of 1% uh, uh, as early as 24 weeks but uh, even the percentage of people who are reaching their HP1C targets, you know, is uh, is much more in the lenalidocaine group as compared to the placebo group. Placebo group. Uh, next one, uh, Yamin. Uh, so uh, uh, you would remember, uh, friends, uh, two landmark trials have been done with lenalidocaine, the Carmelina and the Carolina Carmelina being uh, 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 and a pre-educated uh, trial uh, on lenalidocaine with uh, pre-educated renal endpoints. And Carolina being a head-to-head -head comparison <coughs> between uh, lenalidocaine and the standard of care uh, uh, glimepiride, uh, sulfonylurea, in in Carolina, and uh, it is important to say that uh, uh, these patients, uh, nearly 57% uh, uh, and 49% of the trial population in Carolina, 57% in Carolina, 49% in Carolina, were people who were elderly, more than 65 years of age. Overall, if you see, nearly 50% of the trial population were uh, people who were more than 65 years of age. Uh, next one, uh, Yami. Uh, so, Carmelina, which was a pre-educated, uh, the first pre-educated trial on a DPP4 inhibitor on renal and cardiovascular endpoints, there was no increased risk of cardio-renal events even in older patients. So, what does it mean? It means that it is a molecule which is safer or which is safe even in the elderly population. Next one, uh, Yamin. Uh, so, lenalidocaine showed significantly lower risk of time to first occurrence of hypoglycemia. So, now here we are comparing. This is a, uh, uh, a data from Carolina. Uh, uh, the direct head-to-head -head comparison between lenalidocaine and sulfonylurea, glimepiride. There was uh, lower risk of time to first occurrence of hypoglycemia across all age groups versus sulfonylurea. Whether it was less than uh, uh, 65 years, 65 to 75 years, or more than 75 years. And our prototype patient here is an elderly patient who have had re recurrent episodes of hypoglycemia with history of fall and with history of hospitalization. Next one, Yamin. Yamin, yeah, next one. Yamin, sir, can you hear me? Yamin, next one. I have unmuted myself. Kindly change the slide, Yamin. Shiva, can you ask him to change the slide, please? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yamin sir, can you hear me? I think he has muted himself. Sir, let me check. Sir, Yamin sir got disconnected. Uh, ek bar wo connect kar le. Siba, Siba, I had just, you know. Kindly change the slide, Yamin. All right. Uh, uh, so, friend, uh, 
Lila Gripti showed significantly lower risk of, uh, we have already discussed uh, this, the, the first occurrence of hypoglycemia. Go to the next slide. Uh, so, coming to the last prototype patient, stay here, Yami. Type 2 diabetes patient with hepatic impairment, not an uncommon occurrence, not only hepatic, but also renal impairment. 52-year-old male, unfortunately, works uh, as a, uh, 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 has got uh, uh, child book A, uh, chronic liver disease, antihypertensives, uh, 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 apprehensive in taking injectables, history of uh, hypertension positive, long-standing okay. diabetes for 10 years, and he's on metformin, 1000 BD, amlodipine, 5 milligram, adorvastatin, good enough dose. On examination, 72 kilograms, blood pressure okay. Glycemic profile, HbA1c 7.4, fasting blood glucose 110, PP not under control 210, and he has got renal impairment, EGFR 41, liver function test, albumin 3.6, INR 2, which is elevated, bilirubin 1.8, no ascites or encephalopathy, and his child book scoring is A. Go to next slide. Here is a patient with hepatic impairment. How should we approach the patient? And what is our usual perception? No HA for this patient. AHA is safe in hepatic impairment. That is our concern. So Lena Clifton demonstrates significant HbA1c reductions in patients with type 2 diabetes and hepatobiliary disorders. This is one unique molecule, friends, which is uh, showing equal HbA1c reduction efficacy, whether or not our patient has got hepatobiliary disorders, 0.72% HbA1c reduction efficacy in patients with hepatobiliary disorders, and nearly the same efficacy in patients who has got no hepatobiliary disorders. Next one, Yamin. Next one, Yamin. No, no. Go, go to the previous slide, please. Yeah, now, now the next one. Yeah, okay. So, uh, whether we have a healthy individual or we have got mild, moderate or severe uh, chronic liver disease, uh, the uh, HbA1c reduction efficacy is the same. And uh, uh, so, it is a one unique uh, uh, DPP4 inhibitor uh, whose efficacy is not being impacted by the uh, level of uh, liver impairment in chronic liver disease. So no dose adjustment is required in hepatic impairment. So DPP-4 inhibitor in chronic liver disease, if you were to uh, summarize Lena, Sita, Vilda, uh, Sexa, uh, Tinaligliptin, then you would see that uh, then Lenagliptin, you don't require any dose adjustment in mild to moderate hepatic imp impairment. And uh, 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 there is absolutely no need uh, to reduce the dose of phenagliptin like you do in renal impairment. Similarly, in hepatic impairment, the, the drug is effective across mild, moderate, severe uh, chronic liver disease. Next one, uh, Yamin. So, linagliptin data in Asian subgroup analysis from uh, Carmelina. The slide has already been shared and discussed with Dr. Viveka. So next one, next one, uh, Yamin. Next one, yeah, this slide has already been shared by Dr. Viveka, sir. So, uh, 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 there is nothing uh, which is changing even in Asian population as compared to the global population. And if you see the body weight over time in Asian patients, there is a net reduction of nearly 2 kilograms as compared to the sulfonylureas uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in the type 2 diabetic patients. Um, what about uh, the cost at which you buy this HPA1C reduction? So you would see that uh, the hazard ratio is significantly higher with the sulfonylurea, any hypoglycemia, moderate or severe hypoglycemia. There is a nearly 30, uh, the hazard ratio is heavily in favor of uh, linagliptin and uh, uh, about severe hypoglycemia, it is uh, heavily in favor of linagliptin. And uh, with glimipride, you have a very high chance that you might get severe hypoglycemia and needing hospitalization. Similarly, uh, uh, for hospitalization, the data is uh, uh, in favor of uh, linagliptin. Next one, uh, Yamin. Uh, so uh, the slide has already been uh, shared by Dr. Viveka, sir. Proven eff effectiveness and safety across broad range of patients. No need for dose adjustment at any stage of chronic renal or hepatic impairment. The last... Uh, prototype patient which I showed you. Long half-life ensuring effective 24-hour glycemic control. Next one, uh, Yami. So it's a 5 milligram tablet, uh, uh, which uh, as Dr. Viveka sir said beautifully, you started 
and 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 you uh, 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 you know uh, fill it, forget it, shut it. Whether whether it's about kidney functions, ethnicity, age, background, BMI, disease duration, or hepatic function, you don't have to worry. Just start the medication. Continue to give the medication with useful HPA1 efficacy. No severe side effects, especially shown by Carolina. Compared with the gold standard molecule uh, glimepiride, there is extremely high chances of hypoglycemia with glimepiride. With venagliptin, um, you don't have to pay any cost and you can reap all the benefits. Uh, uh, so with this friend, I would like to end my talk extremely sorry uh, uh, for the technical glitch, not entirely intentional on my part. And thank you very much, uh, all of you, uh, for bearing with me. And uh, I hope uh, that you got the carry on message about Lena Glipton, about uh, its uh, uh, simplicity in, in treatment, about its simplicity in reducing HPA1C, about its simplicity in renal and hepatic impairment, about its simplicity as compared to the uh, gold standard molecule, the sulfonylureas, about its simplicity in uh, cardiovascular outcomes, and uh, about its simplicity overall in the use of uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, over to you, uh, uh, Yamin. And uh, if there are any questions, and if Dr. Viveka sir is still there, we would uh, very much like to answer. So thank you so much. It's, it's always a pleasure to hear from both of you. These, these are such a wonderful presentation, uh, Dr. Chauhan sir and Dr. Viveka Kumar sir. Thank you so much to both of you. And uh, now the forum is open for the question answer so if you are having any questions you can put it in chat, chat box or you can raise your hand uh, to unmute your line Shiba, i got disconnected in between so you can check the chat box if there is any there are any questions there sure sir Till now, there is no questions in the chat box. Uh, Receive one question from Dr. Anil Gupta, sir. And uh, as usual, mastering lecture by both the speakers. So basically, it's not a question, it's a compliment to both of you. From Dr. Anil Gupta, sir. Dr. Anil Gupta is always uh, encouraging. He has always been very encouraging. Uh, Dr. Viveka sir is there? Yes sir, he is there. Uh, in the, if, if no one is asking a question, then I, I would like to venture uh, uh, to ask a question to Dr. Viveka sir. Uh, I know that uh, he has been using DPP-4 inhibitors uh, uh, for many years. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, know his impression about uh, how much importance he gives to albuminuria and albuminuria reduction, as you showed, one of the slides where 15% uh, uh, more than 15% of the patients had a significant albuminuria reduction with uh, with lenagliptin. That is more than 50%. What is his uh, experience of using uh, uh, lenagliptin in his practice? Uh, uh, because he has to use multiple medications, and uh, he has to be uh, extremely wary of the cost that the patient is going to wear. Uh, so that is my question to him, sir. How frequently does he uh, uh, monitor uh, albuminuria, and how much does uh, uh, how much importance does he give to to this fact about uh, linear lipid? So that's a very good question. So let's start it at the you know. So there are a lot of patients who would uh, be educated, self-educated that diabetes is you know cardiovascular disease equivalent. So we get a lot of requests that, you know, how do you, whether the person is at risk of cardiovascular event and what is the risk of mortality and all. So I think the when you go for the complete workup, so apart from doing our regular cardiac workup like lipid profile, and, you know, then lipoprotein little a and all those parameters, we also look at the, you know, and doing a stress echo and all those things. Uh, the, one of the, you know, very strong surrogate markers, proteinuria, microalbuminuria, as you rightly said, and we have shown the data. So we say that, okay, all these things are okay, but 
your you know despite being asymptomatic at this stage you have got significant microalbuminuria and we need to use some anti diabetic agent which decreases that also so both you know the linagliptinib we have to choose or the even the sglt2 inhibitors they both decrease the you know albuminuria and i think that is something where we say that it uh, not only controls the diabetes but it also decreases the microalbuminuria and by virtue of doing that it decreases the cardiovascular event rate as well so i think we it has a lot of importance to that and uh, you know right from our <clears throat> diabetologists to the nephrologists all of them are you know away you know quite mindful of that and they take steps in preventing that uh, sir uh, 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 you are well aware that there was a molecule called sexagliptin another dpp4 inhibitor yeah. Yeah. and there was a uh, trial uh, the sevotimi trial uh, which mm-hmm. showed that there was issue with the uh, uh, increased uh, hospitalization on account of heart failure and there was uh, Uh, mm-hmm. the uh, 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 pro bnp the anti pro bnp the all the uh, uh, parameters associated with heart failure were elevated uh, with sexagliptin do you really monitor any uh, of these parameters uh, with the uh, linagliptin when you are using uh, linagliptin or you are uh, comfortable and and assured that uh, there is nothing there are no negative signals on front of heart failure because of uh, linagliptin Yes, I think uh, uh, as of now, now we don't really monitor. So we monitor the heart failure progression and all, but we are quite reassured based on the data, which is in you know, almost you know twelve lakh patient you know, data, which has shown that the safety is pretty reassuring. So we don't really need to add uh, you know be so watchful with the uh, clinical routine. So that is why this is a molecule where we are very very comfortable and. Uh, we try and in fact there are uh, many situations where you know patient asks that in my condition what is the best molecule and all sometimes we have shifted from other you know dpp4 inhibitors to linagliptin in cardiac patients who have got you know heart failure also uh, sir my uh, last question i am sorry i am i am actually a co panelist but since there are no no one is asking questions and 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 it is a question which would interest everyone else uh, sir in elderly people more than 75 years who have had cad and in whom you have done interventions who are type 2 diabetics and are you very wary of using sulfonylureas and is your hpmc target maybe revised a uh, little little to uh, uh, to the uh, maybe uh, to the uh, i would say even 8% rather than uh, aiming uh, a very ambitious 7% and are you are you comfortable using sulfonylureas or you would like to go in for a safer molecule like linagliptin in in this elderly population especially more than 75 years with comorbidities especially cardiac comorbidities yeah, so that's again very good question and you have also shown the data that you know the <clears throat> safety and efficacy of linagliptin in 75 plus age group is very very robust as compared to any other molecule so we don't really like to use sulfonylureas in that age group having said that there are quite few patient where you are not able to control their blood sugar to this level so in elderly we we are reconciled to the fact that as we have see of 8 around 8 is pretty good but we try and those who have got cardiac event and all we try and keep it around 7 ideally so what we do is that we don't go full throttle on sulfonylurea so we keep it you know in earlier days if we used to give 2 mg of uh, you know glenprovide or something like that then uh, we would rather give 1 mg so half the dose which ideally as a single agent they would need and then top it up with these safer drugs like you know linagliptin or sgt2 inhibitor and try and keep it around 7.5 to 7 so we we'll try and keep the target would be between 7 and 8 and especially in elderly we know that the hypoglycemic episodes would be a disaster so we don't really aim for very very strict control and despite that you know the data is quite loud and clear that uh, even after these molecules even if we have achieved the you know hba1c level to you know <clears throat> uh, whatever the hba1c levels are uh, whether it is 
comparison between 7%, 8%, 9%, if the person is on these molecules, the cardiovascular events uh, are significantly lower compared to the same HbA1c level with other molecules. So meaning thereby that how strictly you control that matters to some extent, but with which molecule you control it, that is also of paramount importance now. Uh, sir, uh, since you work in a corporate hospital and uh, you are a very popular cardiologist, one of the best in North India. Uh, you have a lot of patients uh, who are elderly, who have comorbidities, who have chronic kidney disease. They are ins on insulin um, um, by hook or crook, and they, they are on sulfonylureas uh, because uh, being a cheaper molecule, uh, metformin has been withdrawn by this time. Uh, AGI is not being tolerated, uh, so that is out and uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitors plus minus, does uh, uh, lenalgiptin continue to be uh, a very important arsenal uh, for your anti-diabetic treatment in these patients throughout their life? Yes, I think that's what I was coming to, that people initially for a few years, I would say a couple of years, we were looking at this molecule only in renally renal impaired person and patients but now i have started using right from the go forward go, and uh, that has you know given us quite rich evidence that you know patients have to be on the same molecule for years together and they're reaping the benefit so answering in one line is that you know we don't really now wait for the renal dysfunction patients we can go straight away uh, sir, I wanted to ask you this, and uh, uh, I'm very sorry I'm asking you this on a platform where we are discussing uh, lenagliptin. There has been a cheaper molecule uh, called the tenagliptin. What has been your experience? My experience of tenagliptin has been that at times it is not efficacious, and at times it is unreliable. And there are some issues uh, 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 with the uh, um, uh, QT interval, etc., etc., uh, so I would like to have your take on that, which I think would be very, very uh, good insight for everybody, for everyone else. So that if you look at the teniglipine, the teniglipine, uh, you know, <clears throat> the long QT and the cardiac arrhythmias, they are at a very high dose. Uh, so the doses where 20 milligram we are using, it's not going to affect us as much, but as you mentioned uh, the my experience is also same so i'm not very impressed with its uh, apart from its cheaper um, you know relatively cost effective kind of molecule i would say that as a cardiologist we don't really uh, use it as much unless somebody is already on this molecule week and the patient is doing okay we might like to continue it but uh, hardly there would be any patient where i would have started tenagliptine on my own so I think that sums up this story. So we prefer the more robust and, uh, you know, efficacious molecule, which will decrease the cardiovascular event rather than going for tenagliptin. Uh, sir, if I, if I were to uh, summarize uh, your talk and, and your impression about uh, lenagliptin, you, you still, uh, you still uh, um, agree that it is uh, a one-stop solution as far as DPP-4 uh, uh, inhibitors are concerned, and it is truly uh, shut it, forget it, and fill it molecule. Absolutely. So I would always say that, you know, this is something very, very, very important. You don't have, you know, many strengths, the single strength. You don't have to take it many times, single, once in a day pill. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, renal parameter, the hepatic parameter, the ethnicity, or you know, all these variables, male, female, age. So I think uh, it's a really wonderful molecule. So I remember one of my senior who was there in medical college and uh, he had five times failed in MBBS exam. So he came to me and he said that, you know, this time I am appearing with you. So tell me, you know, because somebody asked me what will give you, which medicine you'll be giving in, uh, you know, patient who has got heart attack, which way medicine you will give in X, Y, Z, different diseases. And he said that every time, you know, the examiner asks me the question and uh, I mix and match. So somebody says that you give this molecule in this disease and all. So I told him that if you can't remember, he was obviously from the slightly, you know, challenged uh, 
of it mentally. So I said, you don't remember many molecules. You just remember morphine. So whatever everybody asked, just say, just, I'll give morphine. So he answered for MI and he got so much of, you know, Shabashi from the examiner and he passed. So he, he says, sir, abhi tak mein sabko morphine de ta. <laughs> so Lina right, is something like that. Great, Dr. Viveka, sir. Uh, always a great learning from you. Uh, I, I pretend to be your uh, co-panelist, but uh, I, I always, always so much to learn from you, sir. Uh, you. Over to you, Yamin. Uh, and sorry for uh, uh, all the technical glitches that I keep having on my end. Uh, 